Hello and welcome. This is Lita Downs from the Center for Faculty Excellence, and I would like to welcome you to today's offering, Safe Space Training. Today's offering was originally presented at the Walden 2019 Summer National Faculty Meeting, and today we have Lindsay Gilbertson, who is a Student Success Advisor at the doctoral level in the Richard W. Riley College of Education and Leadership. We also have Teddy Oberly, who is also a Student Success Advisor. He's with the undergraduate level in the College of Health Sciences. We're super excited to have them back today to present this information to you virtually. And at this point, I'm going to turn things over to Lindsay Gilbertson. Thank you so much, Lita. Hi, everyone. As she said, my name is Lindsay Gilbertson. My um, pronouns are she, her, hers. And then I'm Teddy Oberly, also introduced already, but uh, my pronouns are he, him, his. So we created this training because both of us have a common passion for the LGBTQ plus community and believe that this, merit, and this material is important for all. This information is designed to be used as tools to use both in the classroom and in your human experience to better support members of the LGBTQ plus community. We do not speak for the entire community. The community is one that is ever changing. So a few things that we'd like to go over are just the expectations, just to respect the space, Questions are welcome and encouraged. Obviously, we know this is a recording, but you can always reach out to us. Um, please, as you're going through, keep an open mind and try to suspend judgment. Identify any assumptions that you have as you're going through. And if at any time you're uncomfortable or feel like you need to step out or click off, please do. In here, we have Vegas rules. So what happens here stays in here, but obviously, again, not very applicable. And Lita, go ahead with the next slide. For our learning outcomes, we do have to further Walden employees' knowledge of the LGBTQ plus community in a way that helps us live up to the vision of promoting social change, to enhance communication with our students and fellow employees in this community by using a neutral and comfortable language for all, and to recognize our own biases, assumptions, and opinions. All right, so jumping in, um, like what Lindsay said, so this training is designed to just kind of give individuals a foundation of, of an understanding and language um, of the LGBTQ community, um, because we know that being a university, we work with not only our students, but also coworkers. So we work with a lot of people. So it's important to have some sort of um, common ground when communicating with individuals. So uh, we, we have that understanding and, and respect towards one another. So. Uh, the first things that we want to talk about is kind of unpacking what LGBTQ means. We've said it quite a few times, and essentially, um, I'm a visual person, so we have a little visual here. Uh, that that uh, queer umbrella you can see on the screen, um, it kind of really boils down what LGBTQ means. It essentially is a community that in in um, involves two major identities and aspects of a human being one being their sexual, sexual orientation or sexuality, and the other being their gender or their gender identity. And so the first thing that we'll talk about is sexual orientation. So, you know, as, as I'm sure m most of us have heard, but sexual orientation is essentially who you're attracted to. And uh, the most, um, the majority sexual orientation out there is straight um, or heterosexual. Uh, that identity is not included in the LGBTQ community because it is the majority. And so, um, for instance, uh, minority or um, sexual orientations that are included in the LGBTQ community include, but in no means um, is this a, in a comprehensive list. Um, it is one that uh, we just hit kind of the major ones or the more common identities. There are multiples throughout um, this community, but uh, the ones that we're going to list here are lesbian, gay, bisexual, pansexual, asexual, um, and we're not going to get too hung up on definitions here. I would encourage if there are questions to either Google or um, kind of ask someone who you think would know or ask myself or Lindsay after the fact. But essentially, that is kind of the sexual orientation aspect of LGBTQ. And now we're going to move into the gender identity section of the LGBTQ community. Um, similarly to uh, straight or heterosexual, cisgender is the majority gender identity in, um, you know, in right now in, in the uh, culture we live here today. Um, so that one is not included in the um, LGBTQ community. And essentially what cisgender is, is when someone's biological assigned at birth sex is uh, 
reflected with their internal um, feeling of who they are and who their gender is. And uh, so on the opposite side of that, you have transgender who's biological assigned at um, sex assigned at birth uh, does not necessarily match their gender identity. And Lindsay will kind of get more into detail about that in a minute here. But uh, so transgender would be one that isn't included in the LGBTQ community as well as non-binary, agender, intersex, gender fluid, gender queer, all of these things, um, all these identities, once again, included, but it, this is not a comprehensive list. So there are potentially more identities out there that we're not talking about today that also fall under uh, this community here. Um, so we're gonna hand it off to Lindsay to kind of go a little deeper in into what we just chatted about. Perfect. So um, as we've said, or as Teddy said earlier, we are very visual people. So we um, really liked this visual representation and it's actually really great also for not only ourselves as adults, but also to help teach children. So the top one here we're gonna talk about is gender identity. So there's only three listed at the top, but if you'll notice, you know, it has woman, gender, queer, and man. But if you notice at the end, those are arrows. They just continue talking to, that just really speaks to the fluidity and openness of, you know, how, how this works as a spectrum. So the first one is identity and that's how you think about yourself. The next one down is gonna be gender expression. That's how you show yourself to the world. So there's three listed here again with arrows at the end. So there, this is not inclusive of every single definition or every single even word within gender expression. Um, biological sex, obviously um, what you're born with at birth. You can either be born female, male, or intersex. And then sexual orientation is who you love. Um, again, only three listed here, but still has that very open spectrum with um, arrows on both sides. So next slide. All right, so we kind of went over a little bit of vocab um, and kind of gave that foundation understanding of what the LGBTQ you know, community actually is and means instead of just saying the acronym at you a whole bunch. So kind of here's where we're tying it in, why we, why we think this information is important and uh, what you can do with it. Essentially, so we're not saying that, uh, um, excuse me, let me backtrack for a second. Essentially, so I did a lot of my research in the resiliency with um, students within the transgender community. And this also, you know, is similar to people within just like the LGBTQ community as a whole. It is more difficult. They, people within this community experience a lot more stressors as well as uh, um, um, potential discrimination based on their gender identity and sexual orientation as opposed to the majority um, sexual orientation and gender identity. And so those are things that can impact students or coworkers. And so that's kind of why we're, we're chatting about this here today and why we think this information is important. So some major points in a individual's experience within the LGBTQ community. We've listed a couple of those milestones here on this page. Uh, once again, by no means is this the uh, encompass everyone's experience. There could be other milestones or they might not, a person might not experience all of these things. But uh, a majority of people within the LGBTQ community will potentially experience being closeted. And essentially what that is, is that individual either hasn't come out to themselves with their identity or come out to the individuals around them with, uh, with their identity and sharing who they are and have accepted who they are. Coming out is that experience of, you know, accepting your identity for yourself as well as, you know, informing others around in your, in your circle about your identity. So that would be coming out. Something to keep in mind about coming out, it is not a one-time thing. People within the LGBTQ community don't just have a, a party, a celebration, hey, I'm coming out, and then it's done. Um, we wish that would be that um, easy peasy, but uh, coming out essentially is an everyday decision and um, um, chore for, for, for people because uh, um, if we go to the next, we'll, we'll skip outing for a second, but if we go to passing, um, so for instance, passing really kind of is, is talked about within the transgender community, but can also be in the uh, LGBTQ community um, as a whole. And essentially, it means you're passing as the majority. And uh, why people would want to pass is maybe that's um, 
who they feel that they are and who they would like to how they would like to be represented within the the majority and also has to do has to do a lot with safety so for instance someone who is transgender who's transitioning if they pass as the majority or someone who's cisgender um, they could potentially, like I said, either um, that's how they feel, who, that's who they are, and that is great, or it, it could be used as, as a safety mechanism rather than having um, the world just automatically assign them as this uh, LGBTQ identity. They're able to just kind of exist without having that be something that's worn on their sleeve. Similarly to someone who is in, has a sexual orientation and passes as straight. Um, that could be used as a safety mechanism as well, not, necess not necessarily something that they're ashamed or embarrassed about their identity, but uh, not the whole world needs to know about their identity to continue to exist. Um, one other thing to keep in mind as an important milestone in someone's uh, experience in the LGBTQ community is the potential of outing, whether that be incidental or intentional by someone else. Um, being outed is is a hazard to that individual's safety and so that could be like uh, having a conversation with coworkers at uh at lunch and someone were to say oh i heard so and so is is gay and maybe that so and so didn't want everyone to know or wasn't out and had told you that in confidence and all of a sudden their potential for uh um repercussions whether that be just kind of um uh less communication with with their coworkers or, you know, who knows? I mean, there are laws to prevent discrimination, but uh, um, there's always that potential for that to, um, imp you know, Im impact their, their profession as well as their safety. So it's important to, you know, be intentional with your words and not uh, out anybody. Um, yeah, so that's uh, those kind of four major milestones that we wanted to chat about. Let's uh, continue on. All right, so here's a couple of things for if someone um, comes out to you, what you shouldn't do. So the first thing is going to be use derogatory language. If you're unsure of a word, don't use it. Also, different words may be derogatory to some people, but not to others. So queer is the perfect example. When I was growing up, you didn't say that word. It was really inappropriate, but now it's actually how I identify. So I think it is very interesting just kind of how the tables have turned. Don't out someone like Teddy spoke about earlier. You don't want to, you know, abuse that person's trust or confidence that they've put in you. It is their story. Please let them tell it. Um, don't say I always knew that takes away from what they've just told you and puts it back onto you and really this moment is about them not you. Don't state your personal opinion on what they told you. Again, this is their moment. This is about them. Uh, do not ask probing questions, you know, oh, how did this happen or what did you, you know, how did you know, things like that. It's just let them tell the story the way that they want to tell the story and um, yeah, just be really supportive for them. All right, now on to the things that you should do if someone comes out to you. Um, use their preferred name or pronouns. That's very important within the transgender community. And uh, I use transgender community as an umbrella term for gender identity. So I apologize that I not, uh, did not in, you know, um, say that at the beginning. But um, so yeah, use preferred name and pronouns. The next thing is to use reflective language. So what Lindsay touched on is this idea of like there are certain identities and words that uh, some people have reclaimed and like this is my identity. Whereas other people still find those words like listen, I grew up in a different time and that that word is still um, painful for me to hear and please don't call me that. So if someone is going to come out to you and specify a specific identity, be sure to use that identity rather than saying, oh, well, I've had this, you know, safe space training. I have an idea of what's going on. You're falling under this category. Don't, don't label anybody. Let them, you know, reflect the language that they're using. And I think that's something we should just use as a whole when interacting with other people, not necessarily just within the LGBTQ community. Um, the next thing is keep that inf inf information, excuse me, confidential. Like Lindsay said, not your story to tell. Um, understand that it, when someone's coming out to you, that is a huge level of trust. That is something that uh, isn't just like standard, you know, hey, did you hear this? Or how about the weather? That is 
they're sharing a piece of you that could potentially jeopardize their safety in the future and they want you to know because it's it's you know they trust you um the next thing is if you do address somebody incorrectly apologize and then change the behavior moving forward um, there's no need to draw a whole bunch of attention to it and make a scene because that just makes it uh, prolongs the awkwardness and the uh, uncomfortable of the the um, screw up. The next thing is just like you would do with any friend or anyone in, in who you care about in your in your circle is asking how you can best support them um, and then let them kind of like Lindsay said take control back to um, what they're telling you and have that power given back to them. So why is this training important? As, as a, an online institution, we have had this question several times, you know, we're at an online institution, I don't see how this is beneficial, or, you know, why is it important? So a lot of students within the LGBT community choose an online institution over your, you know, your brick and mortar schools, because they're safe from things like bullying, violence, you know, just fear of being themselves. And so there are several people within these communities, you know, that go to school here. There's also a ton of them that go to that work here. And we just need to be sure that we're being respectful with the things that we say. So we hope that you find this training as beneficial as we did when creating it. All right, so what can we do? Um, so we've kind of given, went over a lot of information, some basic foundations and things like that. Um, essentially, you know, Lindsay and I understand that we're, we, we don't expect students to just call the phone or whoever you're interacting, however you interact with students or coworkers, like, hey, by the way, this is my identity. What can you do for me? We don't anticipate that. It could happen because, you know, students call in and say the darndest things, but, uh, I think it's important to recognize that being within this community does set um, individuals up for um, facing a lot more discrimination than they would if they were in the majority population, just like any identity that is a minority and not the majority. And so that can potentially impact, you know, studies, your, your uh, performance at work, things like that. So it's those, that's basically why a major reason is to keep that in mind when working with somebody who is, who is going through some of those milestones that we talked about it it, it uh, um, that is one of the one of the major things that I also wanted to hit but okay sorry what can we do I went on a tangent I apologize for that um, one thing is include an inclusivity statement in your bio or in your you know initial greeting to your students um, the next thing is add your personal pronouns, excuse me, add your pronouns in your signature. So like Lindsay and I, when we first started this, the, the training, we introduced our pronouns. So there wasn't any guessing game. You get to say, hey, these are my pronouns. Um, and so that way you know how to address me properly. And uh, also by doing that, it normalizes the fact that we should just be letting people know when we interact with them, hey, these are my pronouns, instead of um, assuming that everyone who is transgender or, or who is transitioning needs to tell me their pronouns. We should just know everybody's pronouns, even if, um, you know, because people assume that's just human nature. Uh, if we just, let's take the guessing game out. Let's make it normal for everybody. Um, always use reflective language like we talked about. That's another thing that you can do. And then if someone were, uh, if you were to call someone the wrong thing, um, use the wrong pronouns or name, apologize and move forward. And then uh, one of the major things is also don't assume pronouns. We kind of touched on that with uh, putting that in the your signature, but uh, um, you know, a great way to open up that conversation. Hi, my name is Teddy. My pronouns are he, him, his. That opens up the conversation. So whoever you're talking with will say, oh, well, mine are, you know, they, them, theirs. Great. Perfect. Now we all have that understanding and communication. Okay. On to the next thing. Perfect. Um, so the next thing is kind of diving a little deeper is this is what Lindsay put in her onboarding um, email to students. So that initial, you know, communication with students, just putting um, that inclusivity statement. So as your student success advisor or whoever you are, I would do, I will do my best to create an inclusive, inclusive and equitable atmosphere where all students is all students' identities are valued and respected. If you have the name, if you have a name or set of pronouns that may differ from what we, what we have in our system, please let me know so that I am sure to address you correctly. So 
like I said, opening up that conversation and um, allowing students to say, oh, okay, this person is aware, you know, and is open to hearing what my preferred pronouns are, or name are. Um, so just kind of putting that somewhere, but uh, on to the next thing. So another thing that Teddy already kind of addressed a little bit is just adding your pronouns into your signature line. So if you see here, I just have, have a great day, Lindsay Gilbertson, master's in science, and then my pronouns, she, her, hers. Now with mine, I have them hyperlinked to our diversity and inclusion, why we put pronouns in our signature line, which I have found to be really, really um, advantageous. So I would definitely suggest doing that, but also, um, yeah, I, I have just found this to be great. So if anybody has any questions about how to do so, you can always ask us or send us an email or however you'd like to do that, but we have found it to be amazing. And this is what that, so this is what it links right to. So to link to and show kind of, okay, here's the introduction, you can move to the next one. And then here, what is a gender pronoun? Why do they matter? This is just, honestly, for me, has been really, really great. I haven't had a lot of questions about why I put that in there. And so I would like to believe it's because I have this connected right to it. And here's our references. And our resources are obviously just going to be that diversity and inclusion pronouns. Questions? And if you have them, please contact us. Here's our contact information.